Hey everybody, Chris Lindsay here, and you're listening to Pitch List. Join us on a deep dive into the heart of what makes writing songs and making music so magical. Let's find out what makes songwriters tick, and along the way, remember why we love music. Welcome to Pitch List. Some people, you know you're going to like them from the first time you meet them. Our guest today is one of those people. Since moving to Nashville in 2009, he's moved effortlessly between his own artist career and some huge music row cuts. His style ranges from a heartfelt Christmas album last year to his current single, a cheeky look at gold diggers called Range Rover. He even had one of his idols, Steve Winwood, play on the track. Thank you for being here. This is Chris Lindsay, and you're listening to Ben Rector on Pitch List. Good morning. It's another sunny day. No, cloudy day in Nashville. (laughs) (laughs) My guest was like, I don't think so. I was going to go with it. I was like, okay. Yeah. It's one of those Nashville mornings where you're like, wow, is it going to be summer? I'm not sure. Um, My guest today is somebody that I am a big fan of. I know Dana is too. This is Ben Rector. How are you, man? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the kind words. Thank you for being on the show. Before I started recording, I was telling you, um, through the years, I've heard some of your stuff. Uh, last night, I really dug in and man, absolutely love everything. I love your new, your, I don't know how old the Christmas record is, but that is really beautiful. And Thanks, uh, man. I love your, I love your, uh, no, I'm not going to gurm you the whole time, but I do want to say it. I love your positive take on life, man. You know Thank what I you. mean? It's like really, really kind of refreshing and uh you know it's really great you know really great you're 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 kind to say that this is a wonderful you're making me feel awesome you just need to follow me around it's just talk to me all the time i'll do it i'll do it (laughs) i'll be happy to do it now i read that you were originally from tulsa is that right indeed I'm, i'm a native oklahoman that's where there must be something in the water down there um do you know ryan tedder you know so he was like I I don't know exactly how old he is, but he felt like he was one, like I'm thinking of uh, like high school. Right. He was like one four year. I mean, probably like eight year class. He was like right. one level you, ahead yes. of me, and so I didn't really start doing like music proper, like playing shows and stuff, until I was a you know maybe middle of high school, and at that point he was gone. And so I knew a couple people that knew him, right. but like we were never running in the same circles. But when I found out he was from Tulsa, I remember I heard, um, uh, apologize. I think it was from one Republic. And I was like, this is awesome. And I looked him up on MySpace, <laughs> and there I, I saw that he was from Tulsa or I read about it. And I was like, Oh my gosh. But, um, I, we, we've, we've crossed paths a little bit, but I don't know him well. Yeah. Great guy. Did you, yep. did he, did you guys go to the same school? We didn't, but I th- I think the school that he went to, and I could be wrong about this, but I lived near it. Yeah, but we didn't go to the same school. Yeah, he has a big worship background. Mm-hmm. His dad was a uh, wrote Christian music, and uh, I didn't know uh, that. Yep. Now, do you have a worship background also? Yeah. So basically, I I started probably the way I really learned how to play music was and I, I fiddled around with guitar you know before this but i started really getting into like songs and that kind of stuff so i went to a christian high school and we had a praise and worship class which you like auditioned to get into but then it was so basically they wanted like you know just the people that were really into music and we had a great teacher and every week was essentially just a crash course in like arranging you know essentially like quote unquote a set um, and that was honestly the best probably like education for at least like live music that I could imagine. Cause every week and it was it, the, the people that were in the class, like the other people were really talented. And so it was essentially a crash course on how to be a band, like understanding the mechanics of like different parts of songs and that kind of stuff. And so that was really where I probably started to get into music, uh, at least in the way that I am now, which is like, yeah, every every week he let us like just put together the set, and so it was it was a really great um, way to learn about that, and and also like 
to like dive into that kind of like part of music was, it was, and I feel like what's weird is you saying that about Ryan. I didn't know that. Um, but I feel like so many people have that experience where like they kind of learn how to play music in church. And even if they're not making that kind of music still, that's kind of like a seminal thing for them. So, um, yeah, I, that's, that's kind of how I started. Yeah. I, I wondered that cause mm-hmm. you've got a little bit of that vibe. I think you're right. Um, and I've talked to, to him about it multiple times I think when you grow up in that musical family, it's all about emotion. And that's like, that's and, what you, I was and that say. transfers to, to secular music. Right. And I think that's, it's almost like if you're learning classical music or if you're trained classically, you're learning kind of like precision and a little bit of the math and whatever, like you're, that's your relationship to it. And not that it's devoid of emotion at all, mm-hmm. but I feel like the people that learned how to make music kind of connecting to that like spiritual emotional aspect that's kind of like you're learning the minutia of that you know what I mean and I, I think yeah. you're right like I think that that's like that's also though I think probably the way most people experience music so I think that, that that is an interesting observation I've never heard it put like that but yeah like you're learning like how to kind of like ride the emotion of music primarily like that's your main thing which is yeah. interesting yeah and it's not a thing of the music creates the emotion especially in a a real uh, in a church that it's really working it's mm-hmm. a feedback yeah sure you know between the 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 people in the room and the musicians and then mm-hmm. then you get the holy spirit aspect yep you know and and you know that that runs through gospel music you know mm-hmm. and early r&b rock and roll that all came from that too totally um, it all came i think started with that yeah, I, I wondered. I wondered when I listened to you. I thought, man, I bet, I bet he grew up playing in church, or at least did some of that. Sa- um, a, a, a safe bet. Yes. <laughs> well, let's let's move on. There's one of your songs that I absolutely adore called "Extraordinary Magic." I, I don't. When is that? A couple records back for you that song. Yeah, so that's uh, that was on a record called Magic. And mm-hmm. I'll, I, I, I'll just shoot totally straight. I want to be able to be like, I wrote that whole song and it's so awesome. And basically here's what happened. Um, a friend of mine, super talented guy named Ben Shive. He's a producer and also a, um, like, a, a pianist, I guess, keys player. But mm-hmm. I, I mean, now he mainly produces and writes and stuff. He sent me a version of that song and was like, he didn't, I don't think he knew the record wasn't called magic, but he just sent me the song. Uh, and it was pretty similar to how it is now. Honestly, he was like, Hey man, I, I just was seeing if you wanted to like, think about, would you ever sing this for licensing? And I was like, Whoa, this song is incredible. I would love to make some changes, but like, I want to just like have this song be on the record. So he was stoked. And so basically there was a few things that changed, but I can't claim that much credit for that song. Although he did, it was called Ordinary Magic. It was like, I see the most ordinary magic in you, which is a theme that I love. Like I'm all about finding beauty in like normal life, et cetera. But it felt so much like a Pixar movie to me that I was like, dude, this has got to be called Extraordinary Magic. And he was like, oh, okay. And I was like, you know, we could put a little hitch in like Extraordinary Magic. I was like, I just see like, it's like a animated movie. Um, but the song as it is, I would say he deserves, you know, 98% of the credit for, and I was so stoked just to be a part of it. And that's not honestly something I've ever done. Like I usually either write alone or I co-write some of the stuff, but I was just so struck by that song that I was like, man, if you'll let me make some changes to this, I would love to get to sing it. And so it's, man, it's such a lovely song and I want to be able to be like, it was me, but really it was was mainly Ben. So he deserves the kudos for that. Well, you know what, that, that's really sweet of you to say. I don't know if I've ever heard an artist talk about that because it does happen. You yeah. know what happens where, and, and honestly, you're probably not taking enough credit. You know, a lot of times a song may have something about it that it's not going to get cut. Mm-hmm. And you as an artist, I've seen artists do this. They'll sort of pick out the things. And then as from a writer's perspective, you're like, oh, I didn't think about that. You sure. know? So I, I would imagine you had more to do with that than you're letting on. But uh, well, you're, are, you're kind. And honestly, for me, that was a different, like, I feel like especially in Nashville, that's a thing that happens so much. And I think I've always approached 
music probably primarily as a, a writer. And so like, I don't think, and I, to his credit, he wasn't like pitching me on the song. I think he was literally like, this is a cool song. Like I, I'm not a singer. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting thing for me. I remember at the time my managers were like, kind of like, yeah, are you like, are you okay with that? And I was like, oh yeah, dude, like this is such a beautiful song. And like you said, like I changed some stuff, but really not very much. Um, and I, I want to make sure he gets, he gets the easy credit for that. Cause like it's, it, it is a great song, man. Well, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. Well, since you brought it up, it's on my list to talk to you about. Mm-hmm. So you write, cause we're a songwriting podcast. So yep. love to di- dive into this. Sure. You write for yourself as an artist, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you also, it looks to me like, and I've never heard you talk about this, but you seem to have some music row writing things. You're getting cuts on country artists. Mm-hmm. Um, is that an outflow of you as an artist or do you actually do writing dates where you're going to pitch stuff? So, um, I, I'm not like in the mix of like, I'm like, you know, writing on music row, like all the time. Um, right when I got here, I did a season of that really for me as an artist. Um, but what's happened with other, other people like, and I mean, I love writing so much and would be so down to like, anytime there's somebody who's like, Hey man, I like your stuff. I'd love to write. Uh, it, like anytime an artist has done that, I'm like, so, so love it because I mean, I write and I think that I, I probably am like somewhere in between like artist, artist and like people that are, you know, just writing. Cause like I approach it. I don't know if this is unfortunate way to say it, but almost like a sport. Like I do it every day that is a work day. And like, I'm all about, I want to like be as good as I can at being like a craftsman. Um, and so getting to do that with and for other people is something that I really love. And I've done a little more of lately, but I also have realized that I don't, um, I, I like my wires start to get a little crossed when I, do it um, all the time, like in seasons where I've done it a lot, not for me, which is rare. But even if I'm doing co-writes all the time, just for me, artistically, I get a little, my spidey senses get a little upside down. I kind of don't know what's good anymore. And so I try to make sure that like, I leave enough room for me to have kind of some gas in the tank as an artist creatively. And also if I'm, if I ever am writing for like somebody else, Uh, I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to like bring something to it. And I think that a skill that a lot of people that write all the time have is it just seems like they're in a little better shape in that regard, whether like they're able to bring more ideas or if they're like, yeah, man, like I can do this every day, no sweat. I have observed like the quality of my work. If I'm, if I'm doing it with other people all the time Mm -hmm. starts to get a little bit less. And I, I I just would be bummed out for somebody to be like, Hey man, I'm pumped to write with you. And me just be like, I don't know. And that's, I understand that like being around guys that just write all the time, like it's like, you know, almost like a workout. You're like, yeah, dude, like I got to be sharp. I got to bring this stuff. But, um, I'm probably a hybrid of like, uh, writer and artist. Um, and I probably do approach it you know, some artisty people I feel like are way out there and like, I'm not really in my creative process. Like I try to approach it, um, probably more like a person who's just like writing songs all the time. Yeah, that's interesting. So you're feeling like if you get, if your tank is empty, well, and you being an artist, if you get with a pure writer, he's going to want you to take the lead. Yep. So you probably, you're going to feel the pressure if you've got to have some, although man, you know, it's okay to walk into a writer session with nothing. I've no. I've had I've done that and had it work, but a hundred percent. And I think I, I just I want to make sure that I'll be able to like contribute in a right. real way. And I've just um, when I've done it like too much because when I do it alone, I feel like I, if nothing's happening, like I can right. work on something else. Right. And I, I I've started to realize like a good rhythm for me is like X amount of co-writes, maybe like a week or a month. And I try Mm -hmm. to create space outside of that because, you know, I just, I don't want to waste anybody's time or my time. And when I start stacking up a ton of stuff together, I just feel like I'm able to contribute in a way that I want to. And not like I'm, I'm with you. It's not like I have to have an idea, but like I've definitely gotten in seasons where it's like, oh, I'm, I don't really have anything to add to this. And as the artist, because I have a specific idea of what I want to say, 
I don't want to waste anybody's time and then be like, are you digging this? I'm just like, I don't know. So I try to create enough room to where I can bring something, not necessarily an idea, but just like bring a creative energy to anything that I'm doing. So I try to create that space, you know? Right. And if you, yeah. And you know, the last thing you want to do is come out of a session thinking it didn't go well. I mean, or you were out of gas or, you know, which happens to everybody, but totally. if, you, if it, if it's happening because of something and how you're putting it together, you definitely, that's a bad vibe and it, it'll, it'll drag your whole thing down, you know? Yeah. And, and to I get like, that. yeah, I, I just, I feel like being, you know, most of the time if I'm writing with other people, it's for me and right. I don't right. want to, I, you know, everybody's time is so valuable and I don't want to be like, yeah, I don't know. I can't really tell if this is good. Like, right. and I mean, I, I just want to make sure that I'm setting everybody up to win. And I've found that like doing too many co-writes together, I just start to lose, like, like I said, like my spidey senses, I'm just like, ah, yeah. I don't know. And that's, I haven't created a lot of great art from that place. And I, I did definitely been times where it's like push through, make it work. Like that's a, that's a real thing. But like, I've realized most of the best stuff I've made has kind of been a marriage of like inspiration and discipline. And when it's, I'm relying all on one or the other, it usually doesn't go super well. If I'm just waiting around, stuff doesn't happen. And if I'm just like grinding my, you know, self into the ground, I usually don't make great stuff either. So I try to like, kind of like ride that line a little bit. I think it's fantastic. And I think it's a great note for writers listening. Um, you, you, you figured out how to get yourself in the sweet spot you know, mm-hmm. and to where your output, to where you're happy with your output and even just paying attention to that kind of thing is really good, you know, and it, so it just depends on where you're at in your career too. Like you said, you've had those seasons where you, I think it's, I think it's great for everyone to have a period when they start to grind it because you to- get those muscles. Yep. Yeah, and, and, and I think that I, that's, I think that's the thing about like inspiration and discipline. I think if you just rely on one of those it doesn't feel like it's totally going to work. Um, and I think a lot of times people outside of Nashville, I feel like if I ever do some like kind of a creative interview or whatever, people are like, what's your process? I always see people's faces be like, are you serious? That's how you approach it. It feels like people assume on the outside that writing a song is like completely magical and mystical. And it just like, right. who knows when it's going to hit. And it's like, nah, man, this is like a professional sport. Like, and, and it's not unlike, I love golf. Like it's not unlike pro golf where like guys will train and be like, I don't know why this isn't clicking. I'm doing all the right stuff. And then they'll kind of like find a, like ride a good wave, find kind of a good flow. But the truth is that like it reflects to me at least athletics in that like to be at a high level, like you need to have great facility, have, have kind of like grinded for a season to like understand like how to hit the ball right like what what about your swing works what doesn't and so i feel like on that level from the outside often i think people are like whoa like you write how many songs you're just like oh dude every day like that's and it's everybody's like that that's doing this at a high level i think like everybody that i run into that i'm like oh you're a great writer and even if you're not like i write with other people five days a week like like you're saying the perfect sweet spot for me with writing with other people is maybe twice a week and i might be fiddling around a couple other days. And if on my own, if I'm like, man, I'm hitting a wall, I'll be like, cool, I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to do something else. But in times where I'm like really riding a wave, I'll do it all the time. And then when that's gone, like just like let it rest a little bit. I love all of that. And it's so, it's all personal. Everybody's totally. different. I do think that it's worth it to point out that everybody's different. Cause I feel like there also are, there's different types of artistry. Like, and it's, I've found that for, for my own output, it's good to like have a healthy amount of like exercise, I guess, but also leave room for like to be able to kind of like ride a wave of creativity. But I also think that there really are people that are like, man, I'm in, I'm, I write the best stuff when I'm writing just like nonstop and that Mm -hmm. I've had to kind of find that balance. And I think you're right. It is good to like, you need to get your tools sharp enough and that probably is going to involve a season of like really grinding it out and then kind of figuring out what that flow is. But I think there's, I'm sure there's people listening who are just like, whatever, dude, like I do two a days and that's when I write my good stuff. It's yeah. like, that's, that's totally possible. Yeah, it it's, is. It's not, there, that's not yeah. my thing, but you know, it's all, it's as, it's as different as there are people. I remember totally. now what I love the sports analogy. I think it's the closest one. 
-hmm. Professional sports is the closest one to riding. It's not a physical activity like that, but you're you're kind of you're it's a performance based business, right? Yep. For a songwriting. If you and just like a professional athlete, it doesn't matter if you won the Super Bowl next last year. Totally. Yeah. I mean it's cool. Yeah, right. And you get a lot of respect and you got a Super Bowl ring. But <laughs> This season, if you're getting your ass kicked, you're getting your ass kicked. Totally. And if you get your ass kicked long enough, you're out. Right. And 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 I think also there there is some weird kind of like, I, and I don't know what this is, but like this happens in sports too, where people like it happens within a game. Like there's like momentum shift and just like everything's going right. And then yep. like Mar March Madness, you couldn't tell why. Be like, I know that team's not going to win. They just cannot make a basket. And there's there's like that part of it that you can. can can't control but i think there's the part of it you can control which is like i want to be sharp i want to be in good mm -hmm. shape i want to have like my three-pointer dialed or whatever it is you right. do like practice practice yeah and then there's also the weird part of it that's like you can't totally control it and it feels like you can and you can't and then sometimes you know what i mean but i think the athletics feels right to me where it's like yeah like it, it's a marriage of those two things of like discipline and then inspiration just like magic happening you know yeah and I think the discipline gets you to a certain level. Mm -hmm. Then past that level is where you get into the magic zone and yep. you go in and out of that. And, there, and totally. everybody who's put in that time has the ability to get up in there and it's just who gets hit by lightning that day. Right. You know, and then Larry Bird, that made me think of that, uh, one of the greatest basketball players ever. I, I read an article about him and when he was in high school maybe or all through college, he would take the entire summer and shoot free throws. So he's, I don't even know. He had somebody helping him. He had balls on carts and stuff. He would shoot like from eight hours of free throws every day. Wow. For like three months straight, like yeah. 10,000 free throws a day. And it's like, and he did this for years. And you yeah. think, okay, how come he's so good at free throws? That's why. Totally. Right. And yeah. I think there's so much more of that in the songwriting business than people. That's another thing people are always surprised is, is like, yeah, it's a lot of just, you know, if you write 500 songs, you, you get way better. No, to man, I feel like my view of that has always been like another analogy I think about is like if you're a sculptor, like I want to get so good with my tools and have them be so sharp that when like something does strike, I can carve it out just exactly like it's supposed to be and there's no loss. It's not like, ah, I'm not that good at faces. I don't know how to do this. Like I want to just be like an ace as much as I can so that I can like realize the vision as good as I can. And I think like, you know, I can't control always like what wave I'm riding, but I hope that like I'm a good enough surfer that like when, when the right wave comes, I can right. like do the thing I need to do. You know, that's a, that's another great analogy so that when you do happen to get the, and you're, and you know how it is, man, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're just riding a big one and you're yep. like, Oh man, just hang on. And the and tip for me in those rare moments, I'm just thinking, Oh Lord, don't, don't screw it up. Just don't to screw it up. Totally. Don't screw it up. Yeah. I, I've also started to think more about creativity, at least, for me as an artist, it almost does feel like, and I don't know very much about surfing. I read a book about it one time, but like, it feels like a set of waves coming in. And it, I feel like what's weird is I've started to be able to recognize a little bit of that flow, like at the front end of kind of like a really creative time for me, mm -hmm. this always happens. And it, it could be like a week or like three weeks or something, yep. but like, I'll have like a bunch of musical ideas that are just like shooting out and I can't quite like find the words for them. It's like almost there, but not quite. And then this is also weird, but I like have a little bit of trouble sleeping. And when those two things happen a couple of times, I'm just like, all right, I'm in the water. I'm going to be ready for this. And like, usually after that, there's some period where it feels like, and it's not always like this is the best, but like a little bit of that weird zone you're talking about where it's like, whoa, like this idea came out of nowhere. Like it almost feels like there's a couple like first waves of a good set that you're like, oh, I know what this means. And it really is kind of like that. Like, and I feel like I, I can sometimes feel it and it's not, it doesn't always mean that like for sure great stuff is happening, but it does, it's usually a prolific little bit for me and i've started to recognize like those couple signs which is weird but it, it really is almost like almost always happens where like for the next like little bit i'll have like an outpouring of something and it doesn't mean those are the best songs but like that's kind of a rhythm for me which is weird no i i uh i have i've spoken to many writers same for me 
there are these periods. I've had periods where like I, in one day I would write down three titles that got cut, you know, it's just like, it just got in me. And then, you know, I had a thought, man, I'll hit you with this. And this is totally crazy, but I had it. Um, I thought of this one day, you know, every morning we wake up, right? The -hmm. earth is going around the sun Mm -hmm. about 50,000 miles an hour, right? Mm -hmm. When it, when it, um, in a year's time, it comes back to essentially the same, close to the same place. So basically we travel millions of miles. Mm -hmm. So when you go to bed at night and you wake up, the earth is actually physically millions of miles away from where it was when you went to sleep. Wow. That's crazy. Right. I thought about that. Yeah. So it wouldn't be that weird to think maybe there's something in some place. Sure. Because we totally. don't, we think we're not under, we, we think that we're not experiencing any motion because in physics, it, all this is what they talk about. But basically, you can't feel motion. You can mm-hmm. only feel acceleration or deceleration. I am reading, it's called the elegant universe right now, mm-hmm. reading about that. That's so weird. It's like the speed of light is constant no matter yep. what. And you could, yeah, theory of relativity, yep. crazy. It, all, it is all crazy. Because it's all true. I mean, if you dig into that physics stuff all the way down to quantum mechanics. Dude, string it's theory. Like it's, it's all like vibrations. I was like, right. that makes so much sense. Yeah, so that's what I wonder sometimes. It's just like maybe we physically move into another area where, you know, who knows? There's something out there that makes us more creative. I just know it's true what you're saying. It's and, absolutely and, and, true. And I feel like there's no... I I don't like... I think music is like is magical and is like whatever but i feel like the longer you do it the the more it's a little bit not that that's out of it that's not really the right way to say it but i feel like i don't try to like deal in like yeah who knows man but like you cannot deny because i agree with you there have been seasons where like a bunch of stuff will hit you at once and you're just like what is going on because like Mm -hmm. at this point i would like to think to use the golf analogy again like I'm not that much worse or that much better day to day. Like we're kind of dialed into whatever this is going to be. Like you do something a lot and it's like, yeah, you're, you're pretty consistent. And then all of a sudden it's just like explosion of stuff. You're just like, what? That is something. And I don't know what it is, but it, there's no way that, you, that I think anybody who does this a lot is, doesn't see that like there is some kind of like magical, mystical, spiritual part of it. It's just like, I don't know how that happens, man. Cause I don't think I got like, 12,000% better as a writer today. Like, I just right. think that's how it goes, you know? Well, I ran into a guy one time, this is 10 years ago. And he, now, by the way, he's, he's a very well-known writer, hmm. but he was a very strong, uh, would tell you all about it, atheist. Mm-hmm. And look, I don't want to get in religion on the show, but I was always amazed. I'm like, how can you be so good at this and not acknowledge the Holy Spirit? Are you crazy? You know, you know, I no, look, I get it. It could be Buddhism, Hindu. I, I yeah, get yeah, it. We don't want yeah. to qualify that. Yeah. But you know there's a power out there and you know you're tapping in. Right. And, and, and I think that's the deal. It's like you might be not down with like a certain name of it or like right. calling it a certain thing. but Or I think, a detail. Yeah. It's like you, you you know it, man. Like there's no like there's you're just like something's going on here and I right. don't know what it is. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I'm asking, but um, I've noticed that my wife is a writer also, and we've talked about this often. Fall, when the, when the air turns cool, the first kind of week, you know, first like mid-September, late, that's, and the leaves start to turn, that's a very magical writing time. You know what's interesting is every fall outside of like the last year, I feel like I'm never here. I'm always like, I'm watching leaves change through like, airplane and bus windows so wow. i feel like i don't i don't know what that's i don't know what that's like you know what i mean wow you should well and then in the spring i feel another energy which is just like i don't sleep very well because it's you can feel the spring energy see i've I, my my relationship with creativity especially with the like not sleeping i don't i i literally i can't tie that to almost anything repeatable it just feels like wow. i'm like whoop whoop here comes here this comes and then it's just like the I had the last one I had was like right after like right around New Year's and it was just mm-hmm. like I don't know what's going on this is crazy we'll be back with more Ben Rector in just a moment you won a contest were you in college when you won the John Lennon songwriter contest yeah, I, th- I and I, I was trying to remember this um Somebody else had asked me about it. I think I was a freshman. 
in college, but I might have been a sophomore, but I think it was a freshman. Arkansas? University yes. of Arkansas? U of A. Woo Pig Suey. Woo! I used to play, uh, I, I lived in Dallas and we played frat parties in a band for a couple of years. We used to play up there. I, it's so funny. I, I did the opposite of that. I played frat parties in Dallas. Really? Was, yeah, what, I played a lot schools? of shows in Dallas. Uh, we did like SMU, TCU, yeah. Baylor. That was, I went to SMU. Okay, cool. I, yeah. So I, my wife's best friend from high school had a condo at SMU that me and the band would crash at anytime we played <laughs> in Texas because it was free. And so that was like my like hub, my like junior and senior year. I slept there so many times on the couch. Wow. So yeah. you guys did a lot of frat gigs? It, I, I would say this. The use, if I'm really being honest, I think the frats... And we didn't do a ton of them. Like we definitely did like Greek parties, but I think if mm -hmm. fraternity hired us, they were trying to get girls to be there. I don't know that they actually loved the music so much. Maybe they did. Okay. I don't know. But so you we, were doing original music. Yeah. So I I, okay. I didn't I didn't do like uh, a ton of cover stuff. I mean, we'd like play a couple cover songs, but like mm -hmm. it started out. I like made an EP like very early on freshman year and the next year people went home that summer and then it kind of spread to other schools. And so it'd be like, come play the cap right walkathon. And they were just like, ah, right, do your thing. Um, so I, I didn't do like it. I did. I wasn't in like the cover kind of like circuit, right. um, ever really probably because yeah. I didn't know enough cover songs. Well, <laughs> you no, you, rather I, heard look, this. I mean, it's, it's a uh, higher on the food chain to be able to do your own music. Mm -hmm. The band I was in just played covers and yeah, it, it was fun. Yeah, it was. It's lucrative, but totally. all, but but frat, well, I think it was a good training ground to be a live musician. Although sure. I never, I saw some of the craziest crap I've seen in my life at some of those <laughs> frat parties, and I would put Arkansas up at the top. Uh, I, I, I bet would you put played Row Week. Was it called Row Week? Probably. Yeah. But the the number one crazy spot we played was Old Miss by by far. Yeah, those guys were the craziest. I've seen they would drive cars into the venue. Um, is it, uh, Ole Miss is a, is a unique vibe. Even yes. I feel like we like yeah. it's got like it feels like it's like old or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's a unique. Old place. South. Yep. Old South. Well, I just got this morning and I didn't. I was not. And I was wondering about this and I absolutely love this. Let's talk about Range Rover. <laughs> yes. Let's do so it. So this this now you correct me if I'm wrong. This is a current single you've got coming out, right? Yes, yeah, so it'll come out the 21st. Okay, but let's talk about this because I think this is the first time me going through your stuff mm -hmm. where you've got something, a little sense of humor, a little bit snarky. Right, right. Um, and I love it too. It right. got a little bit of a Randy Newman vibe. Totally, which I, yes. well, I love Randy Newman. Yeah. I think it's a great move on your part. T talk to us about the song and how you wrote it with uh, with uh, the kid on Warner Brothers. Uh, yeah, so we wrote, it was me, Mark Trussell, Devin Dawson. And Devin, so right. I right. know Mark, he played, he was like a guitar player and would like tour some when, when we first started playing together and he played with... I think he played either with Dave Barnes or Matt Wirtz, and then he played with me a little bit, and then he started writing full time. And so I knew him from that. And um, him and Devin, I think, were writing a bunch, and they were like, hey, like we should get together and write. And so uh, we did. And it was one of those things that, like, we had, you know, one of those effortless, like, super fun, magical writes. And I left being like, songwriting is awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and so what, what ended up happening was like, I was like, dude, this song is so good. I really want to record it. And I think Devin and I were both like, we both want to record it. And I was like, that's great. And I, he released his version of it. And I was like, I still want to release this because it's just such a fun song. And so basically the more my record has come together, it's always been like, uh, it's a strong version of what it is. It's like, I would give it like a 10 out of 10 of the energy that it is, but that energy felt weird on my real record. It's just like, this is not like anything else. And so I feel like in this day and age, I'm just like, let's just put it out, man. Like this is yeah. such a fun song and I think people would love it. So basically, uh, it's coming out the 21st and it's, it feels like it just feels fun to me. Like I love, Oh, it's great. Uh, yeah. It's fun. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's such a fun time. And so we ended up, I was like, wasn't sure if we were going to release it. Cause we're trying to, we're doing a bunch of stuff right now to finish off the record. And, um, the guy that I work with, we kind of like produce 
stuff to on my stuff together. And I was like, man, so I hadn't listened to it for a while, listened to it again because we were thinking about releasing it. And I was like, the turnarounds really just need another lift. We probably need some B3. And because it references Steve Winwood, John was like, what if we got Steve Winwood? And I was like, I mean, like, and we've done that a little bit on the upcoming record people that I was like, no way they'll say yes to this. And then they said yes. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I was, Steve Winwood's a hero of mine. And he's in the song because I was wearing a Steve Winwood shirt to the co-write. I saw him at the Ryman and I have like an awesome like tour tee. And so we're going and we put him in the song. And I didn't, I was like, dude, I don't even think he does stuff like this. So he ends up doing it. And I think it's literally just going to be for me, for funsies, to be able to be like, I love Steve Winwood. He's sick at B3, Spencer Davis group, like, you know, awesome. Mm -hmm. And they were like, hey, like, you know, featuring Steve Winwood. And I was like, I mean, I'm totally down with that if you're down with that. And I I was like, maybe you could like sing on it. And they were like, well, I'll probably just do B3. And I was like, that's fine. That's fine. (laughs) But uh, that's just selfishly for me, like, he was such a hero of mine growing up. My dad listened to him a lot. And my dad, like my family's not like deep into music. My dad is, was a banker. Um, and so I listened to Steve Winwood with my dad and I was like, this is so fun. So that was, that's literally just selfishly such a fun thing to be like, that's awesome. You know? Yeah. And it's a great, it's a great song. Everyone listening should go out and check it out right now. It's, um, it's it really is it's kind of a little twist for you and i think it's yeah it's perfect so let's talk about the lyrics so basically you're kind of talking about a kind of girl that you don't want right sure is so that- the, the, the basically when we were, we were talking about what, what kind of song we wanted to write and um i don't remember who it was is basically like um or maybe maybe mark was like oh dude I don't know what we were talking about, but he was like, if such and such happened, I think like, you know, we would totally just buy like an all white Range Rover. And I was like, dude, Range Rover. And they were like, we can't write that song. And I was like, we could totally write that song. And then it was like, uh, I think Devin and Mark, I was like, we should do almost a version of like uh, Gold Digger, the Kanye yeah. song. And they were like, dude, that feels weird. What, what if it was like, you know, you want to give somebody you love, like everything good, you want to give them a Range Rover. And we kind of tried it and I was like, just go with me here. Just just run with it. And then like, it was one of those times as soon as we started, it was just like, right. Um, but, and they were, dude, they were so kind to humor me. And I feel like once we got like two steps in the door, it was just like, here it goes. But yes, lyrically it is it is so comical and it was fun to like put those clothes on and be like oh yeah we could totally do this fun and i i hope it doesn't come it's not actually like you know i'm not actually like look out for this person it's just more kind of like a fun no no it doesn't come across like that well number one i think it connects because there's nothing's funny if it doesn't have an element of truth sure right and you know that's why i love range rover and white range rover is even better because that is standard issue for the beautiful young wife of a country star. They totally. all have one. Totally. <laughs> it's like that's the car they get. Right. I don't know if they're thinking about it when they hunt these guys down and <laughs> and lasso them. Um, I'm not, I don't know if they're thinking of the car or once they get the guy, the other girls tell them, oh, you got to get that car. But they all have it. That's what's hilarious to me. They all, if you go down to Big Loud Shirt around... <laughs> I don't know, four when all the wives come in to see what these jackasses are doing down there. <laughs> it's like all these brain rovers come in. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. It's funny. It's really funny. And really. I, I I love the Randy Newman grab because he's one of my biggest influences. And I feel like so much uh, of my music is like super earnest, which is just like that's what I'm comfortable like the way I'm comfortable talking about things. And it was so fun just to be like, dude, let's just make this like awesome, goofy song. And it was, and I knew it was good because I would, it's not a song I'd normally sing. And I was like, I have to sing this song. It's just so fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's great. And I think earnest is a good word, but also um, your themes of, I wrote it down, themes of youth and home and mm-hmm. love and beauty. Mm-hmm man, there's not enough rep- representation of that out there. So I think that's sure. such a value to people and why people love you. Mm. But but being able to turn on this, you, yeah, definitely, you should do some more too because 
Man, funny's great. People love that. And it's and, and man, I, I have started to try to lean into that a little bit more because I realize like, man, people I think listen to music for entertainment. And it's so interesting mm-hmm. to me that there's a lot of styles of music. Like if you think about movies, how many movies are humorous or have an element of humor in them? Like, I mean, most of them, that's like a huge part. And like, there are some that are just dramatic, but I feel like it's funny because I think that to, to, to take that out of this whole medium, a lot of times, uh, especially for like singer songwriter stuff, it can be so like hard on your sleeve where like, you know, if, if we're hanging out right now, like you can tell I'm not a somber person and it's like, Oh, like, you should be able to inject that into music because like that's, it's universal. It makes you smile immediately. And that's like, Oh dude, like we should do more of that. And it's so fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. And really as entertainment, I mean, you're providing people with three and a half minutes of an escape totally, and something fun like that does it, or it could be emotional that mm-hmm. provides a service for people. I think for our business of writing songs and your side of performing too, you're, it's our, we're, we're service. Totally. My buddy Tom Vukovac says it's a service industry, Dude. which is kind of a joke, but it's true. Did you know Tom played on the song? No. Yeah. So, so basically, uh, I met Tom a long time ago. He was so kind to play on like my first real record and we kind of kept in touch. And so for, for the first half of this record before the pandemic hit, I was like, man, I think it'd be really fun to go and do like, do the LA and I've recorded part of magic was recorded in LA, but I was like, I want to do the thing that college me would think was really fun. Like go to the coolest studio, get the dream studio band. Let's do it. So basically it was some guys that were based in LA and then I brought Tom out there. Oh really? Yeah. So we, we, we did the, uh, like band tracking for Range Rover in LA and that's Tom on like, I think it's him on all the guitars. Maybe it's a little, maybe we left a little bit of Mark, but like that's him on that song, which is funny. You'd bring him up, but I love that guy so much, man. He's such a trip. He is. He's so great. He's so talented and he's just so lovable. Oh oh, man. He's like, he is a, he's a, he's like a character. He is like like a character. Yeah. He's, he's the best. And you know what? Now the public's seeing him. He's got a YouTube thing. He's been doing totally home homeschooling. Yep. And, now that the public's sort of seeing it, that people love him just like we do, as they as they should. I mean, as like they he's, should. He, like literally, he's. Uh, I mean, I know he's like a legendary guitar player, obviously, but I feel like he's like a legendary character in my mind. He came over here. I don't engineer anything really, but I was like, I really want to get you on like this song, and I've been doing a lot of remote recording with Fields. So he just brought a combo over here. Hilariously, I'm like moving my boom stand around for his amp. But just get just getting to hang out with him for that afternoon, I was like, oh, it's so great, man. Next time you have him over, hide the combo amp and put a Kemper up there on the desk. Oh, dude, he uh, he. Oh, I think I think he'd turn right back around and walk out. Yeah, he would. I love on the podcast because I think a lot of people listening are newer writers. Mm-hmm. Some are young. Some have have other careers. Mm-hmm. Um. But I love to talk about struggle a little bit in every interview. Oh, yeah. Have you, and I know every, there's not a human on the planet, I don't think, I mean, maybe, but um, could you talk a little bit about a time in your career when it was difficult or you didn't know or you're, you know, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think um, to me, I also feel like I always wish um, I could like say to people who are like, I want to get into this. I think the idea that like there's a here and a there, it's like, I just want to get to there. I just want to be like, that's just a myth, man. Like, and I, I know that that might be like, yeah, but come on. But I think really what I would want to say, I think the biggest struggles that I have had and still have are like, that just never, it never goes away. Like the the feeling of like, am I going to be able to write another good song? I don't know. Or even just like, every time I feel like there's a part of whatever process, like either creativity in writing or in like artist stuff. um, Every time I think like, okay, like I've got this kind of like planned out and figured out it changes. And it feels like the only thing that is constant is like that I need to show up and be willing to like chase after that. Um, There have been a lot of times where I've looked up and kind of like worked myself into a place of like, do I even like this anymore? Or like, am I good at it? I don't know. Um, And so I think like, 
I try to like celebrate the work of it and not really the results of it because I feel like that's actually the part that you kind of like live with all the mountaintop moments, whatever you want to call them, like stuff for me that has been like, oh man, this is so cool. I can't believe I'm getting to do this or whatever. I've never felt like a sense of accomplishment really from that. I've never felt filled by that. And I think sometimes people look at like, you know, I've, I can see behind you, you've got plaques on your wall. I, my mine are like facing this way, but I feel like those are never like, uh, that's never like, yeah, man, that's it. I, I've right. never felt that. And I think for me, it's more been trying to like find peace in the struggle of being like, Hey, like try to find peace and contentment in the work of this, because like, that's, what's going to stay with you always. And it's not going to be, there is no feeling of like, you did it. Like, that just doesn't exist. What we what you were talking about earlier, like if you win the Super Bowl, cool. But like, what's next? I feel like um, that that type of struggle has been like present always for me, as far as like finding ways to like still like love it and feel competent at it and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm trying to th- like. <laughs> there are long seasons of being like, this is really hard. I don't know if I like it. Uh, I mean, just the stuff we did starting out like on the road, you know, driving a zillion miles through the night, unloading the van, reloading the van, whatever. Um, That is totally real. Um, But I think what's interesting is I like my heart probably feels about the same now as it did then. It's not like, oh man, like it's way better now that I'm in a little bit more comfortable position. It's like, no, it feels the same. And kind of that like daily, uh, I don't know. It feels like getting in shape. Like I want to like learn to love the exercise of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally. And I, I read something once I'm going to paraphrase, but it was like learning to love to write instead of to have written. Totally. Right. I think that's, and, 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 and what we're, and the thing is, I know that could come across as like, blah, blah, blah. But, but the idea is to like just like you said, throw yourself into the process mm-hmm. because it, no, you know. Look, everybody wants to win awards, and it does feel good when you do it. But the next morning, you're right back where you started. And if you, I, I, I would even say that if you don't love the process, it's going to be hard to be successful. Totally, I think. totally. And I th- because and I th- you just won't, you won't. If you don't love it enough, you. It, it, well, Michelangelo said, if you love something enough, it will eventually give up its secrets. Sure. And and, and I think that's the part. It's like, yeah, I, I think that it is too, the work is too much for, I don't think the payoff could be big enough to keep you doing it. It's just like, right. if you get to the top of whatever mountain you're looking at, which I'm not proclaiming that I'm at a top of a mountain or have been, but like, if you're like, I want to get to that point, if you get to that point, the point, at least so far that I've experienced, is never great enough to keep you running up the mountains. It's just like, you just got to be like, I like hiking, man. That's and, and sometimes I get to a cool vista, isn't that cool? But like, I've never hit, nor have I met anyone who's ever hit a vista nice enough that they were like, I hate the climbing, dude. It's just about this. It's like, well, it takes way too long to do. It's way too hard. Mm-hmm. You just you figure out another thing to do, you know? Yeah. There are, every business has its own struggles, but I feel like there might be more consistent ways to make money sure. than being in the music business if you didn't, if you were in it for the accolades. Now, I've run into some characters who definitely wanted the accolades, and it was more, there is, so you can run into some jock type writers, mm-hmm. you know, but, it, but, but, but I would still say they do love the process. They do love the process. Totally. And I also think for me, like that's not necessarily the way that I'm wired. So that's not like a replicatable thing. It's just like for for, for me to plug in and love this, it's got to kind of like happen in this way. And I, and I think that's honestly, I think that's probably the most, if you're like, Oh, for, you know, you're saying like if, if younger people are listening or whatever, I'm almost just, you know, that's like, well, yeah, like I don't know how to replicate that. And the most replicatable thing that I can see is like falling in love with the work of this. Cause that's, what's going to propel you forward. And that's also what's going to like, what it's going to feel like if good things ever do happen, you're going to get there and be like, is this it? It's like, yeah, this is it. So like, yeah. just, 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 just love the process of it, you know? And one way to do that. And we always say it on the podcast, but I, 
I think it's true. One way to do that is to get yourself in a position to where you do what you love, mm-hmm. write what you love, forget about what you're hearing on the radio, forget mm-hmm. about it all. Do what's in your heart to do, no matter how crazy it is. And if you do something cool enough and good enough, it'll all come to you. And, I've and, seen it. I've seen it a hundred times. And, and I, I do think like, um, you know, so much more about like the, the like country writing world than I do, but I do feel like there's a, there's kind of a parallel with artist stuff. Uh, you know, I feel like a lot of my buddies who are artists will talk about things. And there's this weird thing that happens when like you kind of like make music that you are a fan of, but you also, the more you do it, there's no denying that you're kind of like listening to what's happening and listening to like, Oh, like this is a thing that's working right now. And that seeps in a little bit. And I think what's weird is you can make a really great version of that. Like you could make a great version of an Ariana Grande song, but at least for me, I don't think anybody really wants to hear that from me. And like, it can be a really fun project where it's like, no, no, but like, you don't, you don't, I did all the stuff and like, check out the cool, like whatever. It's like, yeah, but like, that's not really what you do. And that doesn't mean like you need to be like captive to people's expectations of you or something. But I feel like the stuff that always has cut through for me has been like, here's what I have to offer. That's unique. Because like, if I'm trying to do something else, there's people that are doing that natively and I can't like ever do that as well as they can. Like, and, and honestly, like the position I'm in, like I don't get to enter that competition really. Like no one's like, yo, I want to hear like a painfully, painfully like simple song. That's like perfect, like haiku production. That's just like structured and whatever. It's just like, I could, I think I could do a great version of that, but it'd just be like, well, dude, like, you singing it doesn't make any sense so like i'm I'm trying to figure out like what can i do that has the most flavor in it and then just that's the stuff i feel like that ends up attracting things which was just like yeah like this is a full flavored version of this rather than like kind of a knockoff of that you know what i mean yeah right and it's like it's the best version of you Mm -hmm. and chasing something else just i've never seen it work um sports analogy if you've got a team that's not playing as well as they could, there's another team in the league that's running this kind of offense that's just killing everybody with it. You can't you can't necessarily transfer that style to this other team. Maybe this quarterback can't he he can't pull out to the right. I mean, he's right. like he's got he's slow, but he's got a rocket of an arm and he's deadly accurate and he can read a defense like nobody's business, but he's got to step back and do that. Right. No matter this other offense winning over here, it's got nothing to do with with him, right? And and I think that like f- finding like what finding what your sweet spot or what you right. have to bring that's unique, I think is a huge part of it. And I honestly, dude, I think for people that are mainly songwriters and are not releasing music, I can't imagine how challenging that process is because it's like ah, uh, like is this a thing that people want or whatever? But I I would echo what you said which is at least for me and my observations of people around me it does feel like stuff that works the best is a great version of whatever that person does best i don't know very many people who are like oh like bill's great at making like delicious salads but he tried to bloom an onion and that's what really worked it's like nah man everybody comes here for the salad you just do it like nobody else does it i think chasing that and pursuing that is what i've observed for artists and for writers alike, that's what I've observed where it like works, where it's like, yeah, man, like totally, this makes sense. Cause like, this is only you can do this thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's great. It's a great, great point. Um, before I let you go, let's mm-hmm. talk about one more thing. Okay. Ben Rector future. What's in your future? Now I know you've got, um, the song we talked about, uh, Range Rover. Mm-hmm. What about touring? When, when will you get back to touring? So, uh, basically I will release the record that I'm finishing up. I, I don't know exactly when, but like in the first kind of like half of 2022, don't know how that happens. If it's like, here's three singles and then the record or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I will do the proper tour after that. Um, but as far as like this fall, it's possible. I would say probable 
So I was on an acoustic tour when the pandemic started and we only got four of those shows in. It's possible we'll we'll do some of those shows again, but it was really important to me with the record at least. I feel like a lot of records came out in COVID and did this weird like disappearing thing. It was like, here it is. And it was just like gone. And for the first time in a long time, I feel like really excited about this record. And I'm like, I want to make sure it has a chance to like have a life. And I think it's the best. I kept wondering in COVID why like, records were doing that and I was like oh because there's probably there's nothing else to piggyback on like with the tour it's like people are hearing it live they're doing stuff on tv they're you know you're hearing it on the radio and I feel like I want to give all those things a a chance to like exist together because I really am excited about the music um but I will I'll play shows this fall I'm sure but we're probably not going to like do the whole like revamp and like here's the new thing probably until 22 but I would imagine I'll play some acoustic shows this fall Well, that's, I mean, but that sounds smart because I think you're right. There were a lot of records made during the pandemic because people were sitting at home Mm -hmm. and there's, I think a lot of great music probably got, and at some point, probably people will dive back into that and say, look, look, you know, it's such an, Amy said something this morning. It's like, you know, we were watching a period movie early this morning after the kids went to school. She said, well, you know, in 10 years when they do a period movie of 2020, They'll, they'll have to put masks on everybody. <sighs> that's crazy to think Isn't about. Isn't that crazy to think I've, about? It's I've, like, I've wow, that's about, right. Yeah, I imagine like when, you know, Jane or the boys are old enough, like maybe like when they're like seniors in high school, it'll be like, oh yeah, and then 2020 this happened. Or mm-hmm. maybe like their kids will learn about it and it'll be, they'll ask us and be like, wow, that'll be crazy. Be like that happened. I was there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it was crazy. I've been more emotional, a little bit more screwed up now that things seem to be getting better than I was when it seemed so scary and weird. I don't I do, know what that's about. I do think, so uh, it was an inter- the beginning of the pandemic, um, and obviously I don't say this lightly, it was like super terrible for so many people, but it was a mm-hmm. weird time for Hillary and Jane and I. Hillary's pregnant with the twins. We were wow. going to move. And so basically the last you know, little bit we lived at that house, so we moved right before the twins were born. We kind of when like, were they born? Get, look, give us that in right June. in the middle. Yeah, like oh, in, in, like God. late June. Um, and so basically, like it was interesting because that period was like there's no we we used to live in Twelve South, and we don't anymore. But there's like nobody in the neighborhood. It's only neighbors. Every day is like take a walk, make lunch, make dinner, see a person you know on the street. It was like. The rhythm of that, I was, I, I had, we talked about this endlessly. I was like, this is probably what we were like, the rhythm we were like made for. It wasn't like Zooms and emails and craziness yep. and planes and tours and whatever and all these things. It was just like, oh, like I see the people that I'm around. My like rhythm of life is kind of, you know, this. And I, I, I for one, have been like, man, I have to remember the kind of piece that like, we felt in that rhythm and I want to create space for that, like in life going forward. Cause I was like, Oh man, like why, why for the first time in my adult life, am I not super stressed? It's like, well, I'm not, you know, a million places at once and doing all this crazy stuff. It's like, Oh yeah. Like be present where you are. There's nothing else going on. Like you're doing this. I was like, Oh, I want to remember that. You know what I mean? And as I've felt the same way as even in the last couple of weeks as the world, it feels like everybody's back on again. I'm like, whoa, here we go again. I'm on the roller coaster. And I was like, <laughs> I need to chill out a little bit. Just like take a step back, you know? Hell, I should write you a check for therapy. That's exactly it. <laughs> that man, that's exactly it. I sure. had the same experience. And I have to caveat this with, I know. And we we both have mutual friends. I mean, there are people that lost people. And I know people right. that lost people. Totally. I do. And it it's, man, I mean, it was horrible. Yes. Um. It was that way for me because everything stopped, you know, and I didn't feel any pressure. It's like nobody's going to be cutting. Nobody's touring. I don't have to write a song. Um, I learned to make bread. I was cooking (laughs) two meals a day for our kids. Totally. We we all sat in my, I have a 20 year old, 18 year old and a 13 year old. They're very hard to wrangle, you know? Yep. We sat at the table twice a day Mm -hmm. and talked for an hour. Right. It was so beautiful. And I think that probably is what I'm going to mourn. Is that, sure. And I'm grateful to have had it because in the next year, my, my boys are going to be moving out. And mm-hmm. uh, 
I think that's hitting me too, but it was an odd time where sort of, I just sort of dropped all business worry or it just, it just kind of all went away to where it was just like quiet and it felt good. It felt, I have to admit it. It felt good to be like, I don't care. My publisher says, we're just going to extend everybody. There, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Everybody's keeping their deal. We'll just reevaluate when this is over. And it's just like, wow, we just got out of school. And it's just, and and you know, it was it was really, you know, you'd watch the news at night, and then it wasn't fun. Right. Yeah. But and, and there's a deep worry. But I don't know. I agree with you. Yeah, because and and I'm with you. Like I don't want to make light of it. Obviously, no, because no. I, I'm I'm the same as you. Like I know people that it was like they either lost people or it was super hard for them, which is, and it was totally, terrifying. Yes. Totally and, legitimate. But I think like maybe the, the, the rhythm of what that looked like, I was, cause I remember I used to be like, I've had this thought before. It's like when people were just like living on a farm, how did you not get bored? Like right. you didn't see anybody. And then in that time I was like, Oh, I think like my body was like, no, no, like this is kind of the way it's supposed to be. Like get some yeah. exercise, eat some food, spend time with Hillary right. and Jane, see your yeah. neighbor. Like I just cook, like, oh, cook yeah. dinner for everybody. Sit exactly. down at the table, clean and, the house up, do your laundry, get up, make your bed be, because we live these crazy lives. Yeah. And I'm old enough to remember pre internet. And that seems like just a magical oh, beauty of an existence. I know, now. man, it really does. Something happened yesterday. That's like perfect example of this. Well, it was, sorry, it wasn't yesterday. It was last week. Um, I had put in my calendar. There was nothing in my calendar for a long time. And I had put into my calendar just the word golf. And I didn't put who it was with. I didn't put when it was. And it, so it was there for a long time. And I was like, is that a mistake? Like, is that right? And it was funny because like it ended up the people I was playing golf with contacted me the day before. And they're like, all right, so we're good for tomorrow. And I was like, great. I know this is happening. But when I put it in, I had nothing going on. I was like, I'll remember yeah. what this is. And then in yeah. the past month, now my calendar's, you know, has a bunch yep. of stuff in it, random stuff. And it's like, that was a remnant of like, oh, this is the way it was for a second where I was like, well, this is the only thing I've got going on for two weeks. So I'll remember what that is. And now it's like, what is golf? Like what, who is this with? Where is it? Am I going to miss this? And I think yeah. I am like, oh, I, I want to try to create a little more room in my daily life to be like, hey, it's, you don't, you don't have to like, have a bunch yeah. of crazy stuff all the time. I think it's worth pursuing. Well, and it, and your family's young now, but you will if the, as as much of that you can get with your kids as they're growing up. You will treasure it. I promise you. That's a good word. But I got one other question. Mm. So y'all had twins in June. I mean, that had to be just terrifying to go into the hospital. It man, it, the whole thing is kind of a blur. And it was it was a it was a challenging uh, a challenging thing. It, you know, it was like a little touch and go there for a minute for Hillary. Mm. And so all I honestly, that was just like, I feel it literally feels like another lifetime. You're just like, did that all happen? That whole experience was crazy. Who was a comic? I heard someone ask him, they had two kids and then the, his wife had a third kid. Jim Gaffigan. It's like, and he said, what's it like? And he said, it's like you're treading water and almost drowning. And then someone, someone throws you another baby. baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> But you get through it. I'm not yeah, in wood for you, you but you, you really get do. through it. Yeah. And you yeah. know what they say? Every baby comes with a loaf of bread. So you're getting two loaves of bread. How about that? Maybe this song. Maybe this song. Yeah. Hey, man, I've really enjoyed talking to you, Ben. Really, I enjoyed man. it as well, man. Thanks for it's having really me. It's really been great. Thank you yeah. for being on Pitch List and uh, can't wait to hear all the great things you do. Thanks, Thanks so much, man. man. This is Ben Rector on Pitch List. Thanks for listening to this episode of Pitch List, produced in partnership with the American Songwriter Podcast Network. If you enjoyed today's show, please subscribe to us on Apple Podcast or your preferred listening platform. And if you want, feel free to leave us a five-star rating and review. For exclusive content from this week's guest and more, you can visit our website at pitchlistpodcast.com. Or follow our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. To hear songs written and or recorded by today's guest, check out this week's playlist by finding us on Spotify at Pitch List Podcast. Plus, don't forget to let us know on social media what songwriter, musician, or music business professional you want to hear from next. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. 